चेयरमैन मैक बेंगलोर डॉक्टर प्रमोद येवले सर बी सी संत गाडगे बाबा अमरावती युनिवर्सिटी अमरावती प्रो वाइस चांसलर प्रसाद वाडेगावकर सर ऑनरेबल प्रेसिडेंट श्री शिवाजी एज्युकेशन सोसायटी अमरावती श्री हर्षवर्धन देशमुख साहेब एक्झिक्युटिव्ह मेंबर एज्युकेशन सोसायटी अमरावती अँड मेंबर ऑफ अवर आय क्यू एस सी श्री हेमंत काळमेक सर we have preserved these messages by inculcating them in the proceeding of the seminar which we are going to release today we have on the dais honorable vice chancellor sony university dr vinayak deshpande sir as the keynote speaker dr vijay thakre sir as the chairperson principal dr sweeta deshmukh madam as a convener and dr chaya vidare madam the senior most faculty of our college all are outstanding in their respective fields no doubt still i would like to introduce them all in brief uh dr vinayak uh, shridhar deshpande sir is presently working as vice chancellor gh raisoni university amravati he is a retired professor department of business management ex director head department of business management uh nagpur pro, former pro vice chancellor and ex vice chancellor acting rtm nagpur university Am uh, nagpur he is ma in economics mcom mphil mba phd he has total teaching experience of 37 years he has also administrative experience as pro vice chancellor vice chancellor head director department of business management assistant director of academic staff registrar dean uh, in rtmnu nagpur he is a president international center for cultural studies chairman board of studies various statutory committees of rtm nagpur university nagpur he is a member he was a member of senate management council academic council board of examinations member agriculture task force of indian institute of cost accountants calcutta member regional imbalance committee appointed by honorable government maharashtra under the chairmanship of dr vijay kelkar report submitted submitted in 2013 he is a member senate management council Ac academic council board of examinations center chairman of board of studies number of research scholars awarded phd under his supervision is 
conducted he has conducted major and um, minor research projects sponsored by nabard government of maharashtra ugc they are in 11 in number he has published books research articles in various reputed journals monographs magazines newspaper etc more than 100 he has associated he is associated with various universities as resource person phd examiner and uh, board of studies he is also an editor in chief Artha Sambad Quarterly General. Uh, thank you, sir, and welcome over here. Now we have uh, Vijay, Dr. Vijay Thakre, sir, as the chairperson of today's inaugural function. He is presently our Honorable Secretary, Sri Shivaji Education Society, Amrauti. A saintly personality, his gracious presence itself makes the whole ambience fragrance. Very, very humble, down to earth, ever smiling, in simple words, a very catchy personality with full of knowledge and humbleness combined. He is MSc in chemistry, PhD. He worked as a teaching faculty as, as, since 1981. He was the principal of Sri Shivaji Science College, NAC accredited A grade college since 2009 and uh, until retirement. He was nominated, he was a nominated member of uh, the executive body of Sri Shivaji Education Society Amrauti since 2009. He was a Senate member of Santa Gadge Baba Amrauti University Amrauti in the year 2017. Uh, actually, I didn't get his uh, uh, long resume, so I have to say this much of verses. Thank you for being over here, for your presence. Dr. Smita Deshmukh, Madam, a multidimensional personality, as we all know. She is BSc Electronics, MA in English, PhD. She has academic and administrative experience of nearly 30 years. She has worked at college, university, NAC, UGC, level as principal, dean, academic counselor, senator, NAC, accessor, member of executive committee of NAC and important committees of UGC, New Delhi. She has an experience of working with international bodies through participation in works, shops, seminars, and conferences held outside the country even. She is a member of in institutional member of Asia's Pacific Quality Network and All India College principal. She is a motivational speaker, writer of seven books. Fifth, her uh, 54 uh, research papers are published so far and uh, n number of articles are published in various uh, magazines and newspapers. She has played central role in first Marathi historical movie, Raj Mata Jizav in 2011. She has received many awards for her educational, cultural, social, and research contribution in society at state, national, and international level. Since last one and a half years, we all have seen her toil for the change, particularly infrastructure, facilities, research, and the activities. She, in fact, has vision for development. Thank you, madam. Now we have Dr. Chaya Vidhar, Madam, over here on the dais, our elder sister and mentor. She is on the verge of retirement. Most active, hardworking personality. She is MSc, Home Science, PhD, and deals with the subject Home Science and Extension. I also welcome you, Madam. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for the brief introduction of the seminars and uh, the introduction of the guest. Thank you. Today, Dr. Vijay Thakre, sir, has visited our college in the status of the Secretary of the Society for the first time. And today, it's a great honor and privilege to have Dr. Vinayak Deshpande, sir, with all of us. And we have decided to felici felicitate both of them with the hands of our principal. So, I request Dr. Smita Deshmukh, madam, to please felicitate Dr. Vijay Thakre, sir, and Dr. Vinayak Deshpande, sir, by offering them a shawl, shreefer, sampling, and a book. Please, ma'am. Thank you. 
Dr. Vijit, uh, Dr. Vijit Thakre, sir, has visited our college in the status of the secretary of the society for the first time. And today, it's a great honor to have him with us. So I request our Smita Deshmukh madam to please felicitate him. Please, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. I request all of them to please be seated. The time has now. I request our principal, ma'am, Smita Deshmukh, ma'am, to please deliver the welcome address. Please, ma'am. Very good morning to one and all. I pay my humble tribute to Dr. Panjabra Deshmukh and Bimla Bai Deshmukh. Actually, it's a great honor for all of us that Dr. Vinayak Deshpande, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Rice University, is among with us, and a respected Secretary of Sri Shivaji Education Society, ex principal of Sri Shivaji Science College, very well known college, Dr. Viji Thakre, and all my I can say uh, a supported staff, IQC coordinator, Thakre ma'am, Vidhar ma'am, and all my uh, students also sitting over here. Just try welcome all the dignitaries on the dais. While educating the minds of a youth, we must not forget to educate their heart. And so to upliftment of the downtrodden society that Dr. Panjabra Deshmukh already said, we have to work for that. And here this conference, I think the first con conference of Matushri Vimla Bhai Deshmukh Mahavidyalaya Amravati uh, in collaboration sponsored by NAC. Dr. Panjab Deshmukh established the Shivaji Education Society. We are all well known with that. And here I really mention president of our Shivaji Education Society, Harshivardanji Deshmukh Sahib, our IQC member, Dr. Hemanji Kamek Sahib. He's also always supported the college and the development of the college for the academic activities. Being a member of EC also, it's really feel proud. I should mention the name of director of NAC, S.C. Sharma sir. Again, Bhushanji Patwardhan, chairman of EC, because he has suggested the name of Deshpande sir also, because just I want to listen about something about the white paper. It is already displayed on the website of NAC and we are here with the constant encouragement from the management and excellent cooperation by my staff. We are just, it's everything is possible for me, for us to conduct such type of conferences. And really I am thankful to Lina Gahane ma'am and all the technical staffs over here. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. The time has now come for the release of the NAC seminar proceeding. So I request respected Dr. Vijay Thakre, sir, to please release the NAC proceeding, as well as I request Dr. Thakre, ma'am, chief editor of the proceeding, to please bring the proceedings. Please, ma'am. for a round of applause for the night proceedings, please. Thank you.
the outside and if i pay my tributes to dr punjab rao deshmukh and nimati vimla bai deshmukh in whose name this college is being named today the college is organizing a nac sponsored national seminar on the role of nac in the quality enhancement in higher educational institutes really this topic that they selected is much required for the institutes as the uh, in the introductory speech the madam has pointed out that for the first time this college is being on, uh, organizing this national event so for that i must congratulate the principal and his team for organizing this useful event in the college as far as the management is concerned the most of the colleges of the shri shivaji education society has been accredited and number of colleges are in pipeline and they are in the process of uh, accreditation yesterday only one of our college which has a very bad luck that chikli college has got 3.00 score and that's why it loses a grade by just 0.01 score so this type of activity is really needed and i don't know what the organizers they have done but actually the organizers should call all the iqac and the principals of our management at least to attend this workshop physically i don't know they might be attending it online whether the college has made a appeal to all those because uh, these things are very much required and we definitely get something and such type of a tragedy will not happen that with a very small margin the colleges are losing the a grade that is why in this contest they only request to organizer that whatever the proceedings will be conducted throughout the days it should be available to all those colleges of the management as well as other colleges for their benefits while they are proceeding in the nac accreditation processes because even at the nac level also the changes are taking place at a very frequent level initially the metrics they have reduced this metrics now to only 54 they have club number of metrics the qualitative metrics are only now 21 quantitative metrics 33 so out of 111 or 13 metrics which was there earlier now they have compressed it to only 54 so the frequent changes that are taking place at the nac level that should also be aware to all the staff which are there in the higher educational institutes so in that context i request the college organizers to make the proceedings available to all the stakeholders of the higher education and uh, i very much thankful to the organizer for giving me this opportunity and i wish a good luck for the entire deliberations which are going to take place during the day long seminar thank you thank you very much thank you so much sir for sharing your views when you are manager your company you work for your company but when you are a leader your company works for you when you are a manager you work for your company but when you are a leader your company works for you with this phrase i call upon our today's keynote speaker dr vinay deshpande sir to please deliver the keynote speech and declare the inauguration please sir
principal of this great institute, Dr. Smita Deshmukh, Madam, SD Thakre, coordinator of IQC, Dr. Bimla by Deshmukh Maidale Amrauti. The topic is important in a sense. NAC would be completing 30 years of its existence. And in these 30 years, lot many changes took place in the whole procedure of accreditation. But still, some changes are required to be made in the context of national education policy. And therefore, Chairman of NAC, Honorable Dr. Bhushan Patwardhan, he took the initiative and prepared the white paper relating to the changes which are required to be made in the existing assessment and accreditation. And um, I really feel happy and privileged that I am going to present before you the content of this white paper in the context of national education policy. The idea is that our teachers, faculty members, they should be made aware about this white paper. It's a draft. And therefore, chairman is expecting some suggestions, criticisms on this white paper. Of course, the paper is quite comprehensive and uh, whatever the contents you find, it is in line with the national education policy. So whatever the criteria we were discussing so far, seven criteria, what changes are required to be made, that also is suggested in the white paper. So it's a thoughtful presentation of the NAC accreditation. Friends, there is a need to have, always we talk about it, harmony between the higher education institutes and accreditor. So they help us in order to show the path of how we can improve the quality of higher education. And therefore, Vinoba Bhaveji once said that a student should be teacher oriented. A teacher should be student oriented and both of them should be education oriented and the education should be service or society oriented. And then only we probably would get the benefit of this higher education system if there is really good nexus between society, industry, and higher education. So when we talk about the education institutes in Vidarbha, I would say any education institute among its academic and scholarly pursuits, diversity of culture, 
diversity of disciplines and this i consider as one of the important factors for good higher education institutes and we find in our region that we have mixed kind of culture and therefore this is the best place to have the education hub and nowadays everybody talks about that how indian institutes should collaborate with uh, institutes operating at the world level and how we can have collaborations with those institutes so we talk about now international education destination also and therefore i feel that this is the excellent initiative undertaken by matoshri vimla bai deshmukh mahavidyalay amravati and there will be discussing this white paper friends as you all are aware that national education policy talks about many things what should be the kind of universities research institutes how they should operate and therefore there is a need to find out how we can align nac procedure with the national education policy so can can you just show the slides whatever the time is allotted to me i'll try to make use of slides also but i feel if you have any point to make you can stop me at any moment i can see the quality audience not the quantity and that is what is expected in the nac accreditation also so we can have free discussion and the points which we will be discussing here that we can communicate really to honorable chairman which he is expecting from us i will give you the link also where you can share your ideas and he will be happy to accept those ideas i had a discussion with dr bhushan patwardhan ji and uh, he told me that you try to communicate our white paper and try to find out if there are any suggestions to improve this white paper further so friends when we talk about the mandate of nac the mandate of nac basically as we all know it is to grade institutions of higher education and their programs slide show the corner and therefore what we have found so far as far as nac accreditation is concerned it's a grading for the institute and probably in the background of national education policy we may think we may try to find out that how this accreditation can be made for a individual program so we have to move now from institute to program and that is one of the important aspects of the development which probably would take place as far as the accreditation is concerned of course raising the quality of higher education in india is also important and this white paper which we are going to discuss it's an attempt to critically evaluate the strategies which are adopted so far towards this aim and therefore reimagining must start with the very purpose of education as an answer to a fundamental question why do we educate the young and if we try to answer these questions probably we may get certain parameters to examine to find out how grading system can be improved now so when we talk about this 
the ultimate purpose of education is the well-being of the individual no doubt about it but it is not alone the individual but we have to find out that through the education system how we can think about well-being of the individuals in the society also along with the individuals well-being and therefore next issues of well-being that need to be tackled as we all know that legal system that allows the poor to be brutally punished and the rich to go unpunished is an eth unethically ethically unhealthy system and that realization must come through the education institute and if a significant part of the population of a nation lacks economic well-being and if there is a gap between the richest and the poorest and if that gap is widening then the nation itself lacks economic well-being and therefore white paper clearly talks about that we don't want well-being of the individual alone but we want how we can have well-being of the society a nation in which a significant number of individuals are absorbed in their smartphone screens and are unable to regulate their feelings of anxiety and stress lacks societal and emotional well-being and therefore national education policy is not just talking about how you can improve the quality of education but national education talks about how you can have good human being how you can have holistic development of the individual how you can develop head heart and hand and if these faculties are developed probably we can think about integrated human approach which is the need of the hour so a nation in which a significant part of the population feels no remorse for wrong doing and has no consideration for fellow creatures lacks ethical well being and therefore national education policy is giving emphasis on ethical considerations also we know how our system is functioning unfortunately lot many things are happening which should not happen in the education system aur aap logon ne padha hai ki nahi mujhe malum nahi par so tv pe aa raha tha mp indor ki ghatna hui jahan स्कूल के बच्चे मार्कशीट मांगने प्रिंसिपल मैडम के पास गए प्रिंसिपल मैडम टाइम पे वो मार्कशीट स्टूडेंट्स को दे नहीं पाई और वो स्टूडेंट्स ने प्रिंसिपल को लिटरली जला दिया छह दिन के बाद छह दिन शी वाज हॉस्पिटलाइज्ड शर्मा वाज द नेम ऑफ द प्रिंसिपल एंड यस्टरडे शी डाइड दे वर शोइंग द इंटरव्यू ऑफ हर डॉटर and doctor said that i just want justice jisne ye kiya usko pakda diya hai police ne pakda hai abhi immediately usko phasi honi chahiye ye meri maang hai and this is the interview appeared yesterday so what kind of changes taking place in the society and why we should think about ethical behavior quality education so it is not just enough to provide education syllabus but we have to talk about something else now in the education system ye aisa kyu ho raha hoga you find that technology is developing so fast aur ye technological development responsible hai aisa bhi manne ki zarurat nahi hai but probably we are not conscious enough to make use of that technology in the best possible manner patience jo lagte hai kuch cheeze complete karne ke liye 
शायद वो पेशेंस हमारे में से जा रहे हैं वी वॉन्ट एवरीथिंग इंस्टेंट मार्कशीट अपन ने ऑनलाइन कर दिया मिल गया पर हर जगह वो ऑनलाइन होना संभव नहीं होता है सो यू नीड पेशेंस बट द प्रॉब्लम इज दैट टेक्नोलॉजिकल डेवलपमेंट प्रॉबेबली इज नॉट हेल्पिंग आस टू हैव द पेशेंस ऑल्सो क्योंकि इतना फास्ट सब हो रहा है एंड देपो नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी टॉक्स अबाउट हाउ टू एस्टेब्लिश द बैलेंस इन द सोसाइटी too much emphasis on science too much emphasis on technology is creating lot of hurdles and lot of problems aur main hamesha bolta hu ki jaisa drug addiction ya baki addictions hote hain and then you have de addiction centers time will come when there will be technological de addiction centers also because we are making use of that technology at such a higher level that probably the kind of emotions which are required in the individuals wo emotions bhi shayad wo technology ke karan ja rahe hai kya aisi shanka aane lagti hai it's good that you have robot you have artificial intelligence aur artificial intelligence se itne sab kaam ho rahe hain कि हम जो काम नहीं कर पा रहे हैं वो आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस रोबोट कर रहा है एवरीबडी इज एप्रिशिएटिंग दिस चेंज इन द टेक्नोलॉजी एंड इट्स अ गुड थिंग दैट सोसाइटी इज मेकिंग प्रोग्रेस बट यू हैव टू सी द अदर साइड आल्सो। रोबोट मानव जैसा बिहेव कर रहा है वैसा करता है तो कोई उसमें दिक्कत नहीं बट मानव जब रोबोट टाइप बिहेव करने लगता है तो प्रॉब्लम होता है and this is what exactly happening in the society and therefore you find that the emphasis of national education policy is more on these ethical issues and unless we address unless we try to find out what is the outcome of this education system probably we may not be able to give the best possible education to our children so you find that good things are happening people are getting jobs good packages everything is happening all engineering institutes you will find big boards that how our students are placed in various multinational companies but the other side also needs to be considered in a very serious manner और हर एक का एक्सपीरियंस मैं समझता हूं कि ऐसा ही होगा कि धीरे धीरे घरों में भी जो पहले की सेंसिटिविटी रहती थी वो सेंसिटिविटी शायद आज नहीं है आज शाम ची आई वाचर वाचत तो नहीं को तरी को डोत पानी ये अल दिस नहीं चित्र सो दैट क्लिअरली शोज कि दैट सेंसिटिविटी संवेदनशीलता is probably lacking and because there is no samvedanshilta we are facing all these problems and therefore that balance need to be established therefore you find it's a multi disciplinary kind of courses which need to be introduced in all the education institutes isliye national education policy ye kehti hai you cannot have single faculty college you should have arts commerce science all three faculties idea is that if a person is less learning science that won't have the balanced growth so you must have humanities you must learn psychology you must learn sociology you must learn economics so that whatever the technological progress you are making you will make that progress with some kind of sense and that's why in order to have the balance in the society you need all faculties to develop there are these are the issues of that well being that need to be tackled of course when we talk about all these aspects we cannot neglect what we have achieved also there are good accomplishments over the years with our difficulties we have done some remarkable things no doubt about it 
we retain the freedom of the country we preserve the unity of india india remained united for long 75 years we preserved our diversity and strong federalism we have good state center relationship we achieved modest economic progress however there is desperate crisis in education that also we have to accept lot many things we could achieve but we cannot neglect and because we all are in the education field we have been observing this field from a very very close quarter probably more than 30 35 years at least i am in this field and we can see how the changes are taking place of course from time to time you find that policies are drafted they are now at place but this honest policy requires honest implementation also otherwise that policy would remain on the paper and therefore white paper talks about how to implement it and bring it in reality by aligning national education policy with nac so why new next why new education policy now there are two important aspects of white paper one is of course national education policy but the another important thing is sdg that is sustainable development goals so this white paper is trying to fulfill the objectives of both the documents that is sustainable development goals and national education policy so goal 4 of 2030 agenda for sustainable development we seek to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all by 2030 and therefore our national education policy is drafted considering this particular goal 4 and accordingly we try to bring changes in the existing national education policy so rapid changes in knowledge landscape world over that is taking place need to develop all aspects and capabilities of learners by making education more well rounded useful and fulfilling to the learners at the same time bridging the gap between current state of learning outcomes and what is required so whatever the outcomes we are expecting from the education that also needs to be considered of course along with technological development so how the technology is emerging that also needs to be considered and whether that technology is really helping the society or whether that technology is creating problems in the society that also to be considered when we talk about multidisciplinary approach so let us quickly see what are the major reforms and then it would be easier to understand that how it is aligned with the nac accreditation so these are the major reforms which you all know that target of 50 percent of gr is to be achieved by 2035 holistic and multidisciplinary education and as i told you that why holistic education you need why multidisciplinary education you need because we want society to be in balance where too much emphasis on one particular faculty creates problem so there has to be flexibility in education so there is multiple entry and exit and as far as current knack and criteria is concerned at least for this there is no scope and therefore white paper talks about how we can incorporate multiple entry and exit there are two types of ug program three years and four years two types of pg program one year and two years and eligibility for phd program after four years of ug five years dual degree program and discontinuation of mphil so these are the major reforms which are there in the national education policy and of course the next major reforms it is relating to integration of vocational and professional education and that would become the part of our education system earlier as you all know that vocational education used to be separated but now it would be 
the integrated and therefore you have integration of vocational and professional education. There is of course emphasis on skill based and value education. That is the another aspect. Then focus on developing critical thinking and problem solving abilities. So every student, they must learn how to think. And that thinking ability is to be developed with the help of our education institutes. And that is one of the major reforms, I would say, in the overall education system. Every course and program to have well-defined measurable outcome. At the moment, if there is a question that is your syllabus based on outcome, what is your program outcome? What is your course outcome? Many a times, many institutes, they are not well aware about what is actually the program outcome, how it needs to be reflected in your examination question papers. And therefore, in order to have the proper implementation of these reforms, what we need is how you can change this concept. And therefore, every course and program to have well-defined measurable outcome. A lot of emphasis is given in this white paper. Emphasis on continuous evaluation. Emphasis on bilingual programs. Greater autonomy to faculties and students. Transferability of credits. I will talk about academic bank of credit and how through academic bank of credit, credit would be transferred and how this needs to be incorporated in the NAC accreditation. That is concept of academic bank of credit and in general reforms in the teaching program. These are certain reforms and the two types of universities which are going to be there. One is research intensive university where the major focus of that universities will be on conducting research, providing inputs for policy makers, or there will be teaching intensive university. Of course, there will be research also, but major emphasis will be on teaching activities and then degree granting autonomous college. So like this, there will be three different institutes where students will be getting degrees and then you have model multidisciplinary education and research university that is called as Meru in or near every district. This is what reform you find in the national education policy. So higher education institute, flexibility to offer different designs. So two year program with the second year devoted entirely to research for those who have completed the three years bachelor's program, one year master's program for students who are completing four year bachelor's program with research and integrated five years bachelor's master's program with an option to exit at the end of the third year with a bachelor's degree with an entry to a master's degree in another higher education institute. It is not necessary that students would continue their academics in the same institute. They can exit anytime whenever they want. So there is multiple entry and multiple exit also. So there is no compartmentalization as such. And there is no insularity in the system. So there is multi-entry, multi-exit, academic bank of credit, multidisciplinary universities. And the most important aspect is there is no distinction between curricular and extracurricular activities. Up till now, we talked about sports, extracurricular, yoga, music, extracurricular. Now it is going to be the part of the overall curriculum where credits for these kinds of activities will be deposited in the academic bank of credit. So credits earned from art, music, social work, yoga skills will be deposited in the formal education system. And therefore it is going to be the holistic and multidisciplinary education. And that would aim to develop all capacities of human beings, intellectual, aesthetic, social, physical, emotional, 
moral in an integrated manner. And this is what is expected to happen in any higher education institutes. So there is multi-entry and exit, as I said. System provides learners with varied certification option and that pave the way for seamless student mobility between or within degree granting higher education institutes, formal system of credit recognition, credit accumulation, credit transfer, credit redemption, and that will be implemented. Means once you use that credit, that credit will not be used again by the student for another kind of program. So just a bank me se apne ek bar paisa withdraw kar liya, to withdraw karne ke baad wahan pe kuch rahega nahi, us type ke system aapke academic bank of credit me rahegi. And that is how credits will be transferred. Proposals regarding multidisciplinary education. So NEP states that professional, vocational and distance education will be integrated into one higher education system. And there are three major proposals regarding multidisciplinary education in higher education. One is to convert the existing institutions into multidisciplinary institutions. Second is to build a world-class multidisciplinary higher education institute. And that will be multidisciplinary education and research university. It would be a separate university where all multidisciplinary researches will be conducted. For example, in environment, environment is related to science, technology, economics, sociology, and therefore that climate change aspect that will be studied with the help of the multidisciplinary approach. So third is to build the higher education clusters, forming multiple multidisciplinary university as envisaged in national education policy of 2020. Next is about academic bank of credit that is digital credit bank of students. And this academic bank of credit is necessary in order to have free entry, free exit, in order to have the multidisciplinary approach and student can accumulate credit from institute, for example, A, and then move to institute B for a degree. So whatever the credits he has earned in one institute, he will be allowed to take credit to the another institute and he can take admission in other institute. So then now, white paper says that it is the duty of the institute B that confers the degree to ensure that the outcome of both general and specialized education are met when they approach program accreditation. And therefore, whatever the program he selects, that institutes must have accreditation for that program where student is joining. So suppose he is joining Amrauti University where you have different kinds of disciplines. NAC has given the grade for the university and student is joining some program. So if he is joining botany or physics or some science program, then there has to be accreditation for that program. And that accreditation will be given not to the whole university, but to the individual program. So like for management courses or professional courses or technical courses, you have another agencies for the accreditation. In the similar manner, there will be accreditation for the individual program for the individual courses. So there is freedom of choosing multiple universities and ABC, as I said, will be functioning like a commercial bank. Admission is possible in courses. So he may take admission in a course for one college and for another kind of course, if he finds that there you have better faculties, better infrastructure, then he can join that particular college for a particular course. And therefore white paper is emphasizing that now we have to think about how to have the accreditation for the specific program or for the specific course. Creativity skills, and it has an inbuilt evaluation system to assess analytical and creativity skill of students in addition to the convenient, whatever the domain knowledge he has. And that credit can be transferred if the learner changes his or her branch of the study. And that's why 
that choice based credit system now will really be in use in order to find out how credits can be transferred from one agency from one institute to the another institute so how reimagining assessment and accreditation takes place so there is a need to align and accreditation to the national education policy and sustainable development goals 2030 so there are two objectives of this white paper one is to align with national education policy another is to align with the sdgs that is sustainable development goal nep 2020 has proposed the national accreditation council so you will find that instead of nac there is going to be now national accreditation council central theme of this white paper is to improve the quality of education and learning outcomes white paper talks about that the existing system is more input based now we want outcome based and then only we will be able to find out how education has succeeded in providing the all kinds of things which we are talking about in order to have the holistic development of the individual so technology enabled formative assessment tefa will be the future of nac process one nation one data platform and that would be the advantage for higher education institutes to deposit data and nac can have access to real time that credible data so every time like you have now depository for students and there's certificates and degrees now you have national depository in the similar manner there will be depository for the institutes where you can submit your data so nac was established in the year 1994 to grade institutions of higher education and their programs and therefore after 30 years there is a need to look back and that is what white paper did so what are the important aspects of white paper system of assessment and accreditation should be guided by the purpose of education as different aspects of well-being of the individual and as i said it's not the well-being of the individual alone but individual along with society along with nation and planet also so we talk about environment protection and all this and therefore that well-being also to be considered so the manual for assessment now may contain two parts one exclusively covering the general education component and other covering the specialized education component so that is domain knowledge and other kinds of knowledge which is required for any student to have the better citizen to operate in the society so the assessment approach needs to shift from the input driven mode to assessing the outcomes of education how this can be done that we will see but lot many things are required to be met in order to have the assessment in the best possible manner so multiple accreditation agencies model needs to be developed carefully so as to meet growing needs and therefore higher education they are to be assessed accredited and it is clearly stated that it is to be assessed in a binary mode and what is that binary mode that is units programs they can be assessed and graded not the institute but individual units and individual programs also so what is the concept of quality assurance in this white paper as i said ugc established nac in 1994 to serve the function of quality assurance and it is originated in the field of business management so emphasis placed on employability in higher education so what is the proxy we are using in order to see that how far institute has succeeded in providing the best possible education that there is employability and the question is there in the nac that how many students got employment and what is the uh, salaries they are getting and the gap analysis and the uh, question answer are examples of treating education as a marketable commodity so white paper states that probably there is an emphasis more on marketability and these concepts and therefore the ultimate purpose of education is the well-being of the individual society nation 
human species and plants with all its creatures. And therefore, we have to now see the system in a different manner. So instead of interpreting the term wealth of nation in terms of GDP or economic development, should we interpret it as the economic well-being of the nation in terms of the resources available to all, not money concentrated among a few? And that is the shift you find in the quality assessment. So education is basically defined now in terms of the capacity to strive towards their own well-being and well-being of others also. And therefore, that outcome is important. How individual has succeeded in developing his own well-being, but along with that, how far he has succeeded in contributing to the society, how far he has succeeded in contributing to the other economic agents which are helping for the country to grow. So intelligence and dimensions of well-being. These are quite clearly mentioned in the white paper. So there is academic intelligence where it is talked about independent learning, reading, communication, information and understanding, construction and evaluation of knowledge, how you are succeeded in bringing change in the attitude, values and habits of mind. Then there is pragmatic intelligence, ethical intelligence, physical intelligence, citizenry, societal and emotional intelligence, aesthetic intelligence and spiritual intelligence. This comprises the holistic education system. So when we talk about intelligence, it is not just the academic intelligence, but how he is making use of that intelligence in order to have the well-being, in order to have the welfare of the overall society. So our objective of the education now is not just to develop the individual, to make him capable to get the jobs, but we want to make him capable so that he can understand the society very well. And therefore, role of doing as an integral part of knowledge. So how he has succeeded in converting knowledge into action to achieve goal for the betterment of self and society, that is the essential part. And white paper has used probably for the first time educatedness. That is the word used by white paper that it is educatedness which is important. And what is educatedness? Educatedness is not just restricted for the individual human being's education, but how his education is helping others to develop. And that's why it is called as educatedness. If we define intelligence as the ability to do things with our mind and body to achieve goals, we value then intelligence can also be conceptualized as capabilities. So he is capable to doing a particular job, but that becomes the capability of the individual alone. Whether he is developing the capacity, capabilities of the others also, that is equally important. And therefore, forms of education that aims at learning outcomes along two dimensions, foundational capacities, that is we talk about literacy and numeracy. Traditionally, we used to talk about this. Higher order cognitive capacities, there we talk about now critical thinking and problem solving. Also social, ethical and emotional capacities and dispositions. These are the additional components which are included and white paper is expecting that now this should become the part of the quality assessment. Not only individual capabilities, but other capabilities also. Academic temper what you call as academic temple, a generalized form of scientific temper extending to well-being along all dimensions, that is intellectual, societal, emotional, ethical, and spiritual. And that is what is required in order to have the holistic development. Key competencies needed for employment. So we know that the most important competencies needed for employment, that is capacity of independent learning. Translated as the capacity to learn what the industry wants them to learn. And therefore, many times we come across the situation and then we heard that our students are not employable. Now that employability is what? So white paper talks about that how you can make students employable where the capacity of independent learning, ability to work in team, 
पर्सनल इंटेलिजेंस अफकोर्स इज इम्पॉर्टेंट कैपेसिटी टू कम्युनिकेट क्लियरली एंड परस्यूएसिवली सो ही शुड बी एबल टू परस्यू सर्टन थिंग वन सी टैक्स ही शुड नॉट लिव इट इन बिटवीन एबिलिटी टू सॉल्व प्रॉब्लम एंड मेक डिसीजन ऑल ऑफ दिस कॉम्पिटेंसीज आर फ्रेम विद स्पेसिफिक रेफरेंस to the demand of the workplace and viewed from the perspective of employees and that is what is expected when we talk about employability is economic well being the sole purpose of higher education so the capacity to pursue economic well being is only one form of well being and therefore national education policy points out process of formal education ought to empower learner with the capacity to pursue other forms of well being that is what we talked about in detail so physical biological societal emotional intellectual ethical and aesthetic well being for that separate training needs to be provided in order to have the overall education system and the overall development so as we are experiencing given the small number of engineering jobs and large number of engineering graduates many of them would not find engineering job that is quite sure and therefore they would remain unemployed white paper says it is meaningless to mourn about it usme dukh jatate rehna isme koi matlab nahi hai and white paper says that those who complete a b or b tech questions that we need to answer how many jobs are there in india that requires be that requires bte graduates how many seats are there for masters in engineering technology in india so those who have completed be or btech they may go to the masters and they may do phd and then what capacities do be btech graduates need in order to make decent living outside of engineering and technology and therefore we observe that many engineers they are not continuing engineering education or they are not continuing even engineering services they are shifting their education level from engineering to finance and they are doing quite well and this is how total engineering students coming out of the engineering colleges you can't expect that everybody will be getting job relating to his own field and that's why engineers they are shifting to finance they are shifting to some kind of chartered financial analyst kind of courses their number is rising and that is how you find that avenues are developing for engineers and therefore that employability also needs to be considered it's not alone that engineers will be going for the engineering services but there will be other services also uh last part central questions the assessment of higher education institutes should include not only matters at the institutional level but also at the units and programs as i talked about and there are three sub functions that nac or system of accreditation and assessment needs to perform function a is quality assessment guide and help higher education institutes to improve upon their current quality of education quality maintenance and assessment and accreditation it is expected that when you have nac system nac is not just for assessing your quality but nac should become your guidance also in order to improve and maintain the quality of education further and therefore there is a binary accreditation for higher education system how to address the current challenges and what are those challenges current nac system has evolved over the last three decades i'll just go fast because i can understand that my time is getting over so it is not easy to measure the outcome of these purpose and quality measures and the most important aspect is whatever the accreditation system we find now it is quite measurable and therefore things which are measurable obviously there is a tendency to assess what is easily measurable but considering the national education policy holistic development emotional and all these kinds of things which we talked about that need to develop the right strategy necessary methodology comprehensive rubric and technology enabled precision tools to achieve this and this can be developed 
by people like us, where we know what kind of problems we are facing. And therefore, white paper talks about that when we talk about research, it is synonymous with the publication of papers and citations. And we know how our teachers, they are striving hard for publishing their papers. And then 100 papers published, 200 published. That is how we measure the research input. What white paper is talking about, that assessment process needs to evaluate the quality, relevance, and utility of the research. If you are publishing, then how that paper is useful for the policy makers, how it is useful for the industrialists, how that paper is used in order to develop certain technologies. I think that is quite relevant and important. So some of the questions that may provide requisite inputs are, is there a vibrant research culture in the university? Is there an attempt to expand horizon of knowledge? Is there an attempt to apply knowledge for the benefit of the society? Does the research have any relevance to addressing the challenges faced by the humanities? Do the research activities contribute to local and national development? NAC uses student feedback as a source of evidence. And we all know and we all face student feedback, student feedback form. It is important to check whether the feedback is representative of the population of the students or not. What it provides um, is a measure of the quality of teaching rather than of the popularity of the teacher. And therefore, in white paper, all these aspects are considered. So at present, NAC uses main criteria, that is curricular aspects, teaching, learning, evaluation, and you know we consider that as seven popular criteria of NAC. So there is a need to revisit these criteria in the light of contemporary developments, including national education policy. And therefore, we have to find out the parameters for the evaluation of a benchmark where you have appropriateness, inclusiveness, autonomy, accountability, integrity, effectiveness, vibrancy, feasibility, commitment to sustainable development goals and other kinds of goals. This is what is expected and white paper has suggested another seven criteria than what you find at the present in the NAC manual. So educatedness, professional skills, career progression, alumni feedback, these are the important aspects. And therefore, addressing the objective uh, of improving the quality is the focus. So quality of teaching and learning analyzed, measured by proxy variable like teacher-student ratio. And we show how many teachers are there for how many students. And we know how things are happening. Then about number of PhD holders in the faculty, number of books in the library, how many are reading, what is the outcome of that reading. This white paper talks about that kind of outcome, not only in terms of the number. And therefore, the last part, white paper says, educational goals, mean to achieve, and the value system. What? What does the system expect learners to learn to be spelled out in a final syllabus in terms of information, understanding, skills, abilities, capabilities, competencies, habits, mindset expected of the learner by the end of educational program? This is what is expected in the learning process. How? How does the system intend to help the learners? learn what the system expect and why this is the value system that what white paper talks about at the moment but white paper is quite open they are saying that it should be discussed amongst the stakeholders like us and the last point is i will show you where you can record your suggestions and that is in the note. Finally, you can write it. Your input you can post on this link. So all current version, whatever the version I got, this is 42nd revised version. That means 42nd times this white paper is revised. And still they are expecting that uh, they are open to revise this version further with the suggestions of stakeholders like us.
and we can provide them solutions. I'm sorry, I think I took some more time than what was allocated to me, but thank you so much. And I expect some questions, some discussions from you so that then only I would, I would be able to assess this presentation. And if there is no question, then I may feel bad. And therefore I expect that you would at least make some points relating to this particular white paper. Thank you so much. Thank you for your patience listening. Thank you so much, sir. It couldn't have been complete without you. Now I, re now I request our principal, Spita Deshmukh, ma'am, to please share her views. Thank you so much, sir. No words can crystallize my deep feeling of gratitude towards you that you're so, in very simple manner, you presented that white paper because every stakeholder education seekers are looking forward what is white paper what is there just it's maybe outline for anybody else but one can think and one can visit this website of NAC and read the white paper very carefully and try to submit your own opinion or views suggestion whatever you want but express on that and for that purpose we have kept such type of feedback forms also sir so we we'll definitely will send to our respected chairperson of uh, Executive Council of NAC, Bushanji Patwardhan. Thanks for your suggestions on white paper also, because we already said that harmony between higher education, student, society, development of India, capacity building, nation building, everything is there. But giving such opinion, just you focus on being a human, because Yesterday we celebrated 28th Science Day. You know that global well-being, science well-being, for the global well-being. What is the actually the theme? And we are talking about just a human being should be a very healthy, happy, and prosperous in their life. And for that purpose, I think the white paper is uh, that is a good reflection of your white paper. You talks about holistic development, ethical behavior, quality education. And yes, we all agree with you that technology is not the final verdict, that definitely the human being, how you behave with each other, how we think, how we think of each other for the development, it is the actually the secret of education is manifestation of perfection already in mind. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing your views. Now, the inaugural session has come to an end, so I request Mrs. Sadna Mavad, Madam, to please propose a word of thanks. Please, ma'am. A very good morning to everyone gathered here. It gives me immense pleasure to deliver a vote of thanks for this event to all dignitaries assembled here. On behalf of Matoshri Vimlabai Deshmukh Mahavidyalaya, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our chief patron, Shri Harshavardhanji Deshmukh Sahib, President Shri Shivaji Education Society Amravati, and Shri Hemantji Kamek Sahib, member of Shri Shivaji Education Society, and also member of IQAC, Matoshri Vimlabai Deshmukh Mahavidyalaya, Amravati, for always supporting us in all our endeavors and also for extending warm wishes and blessings by sending messages for this national seminar. Thank you, sir. I'm thankful to the chairperson of today's seminar, Dr. V.G. Thakre, sir, Secretary, Shri Shivaji Education Society, Amravati, for sparing his valuable time for us and honoring this function with his inspirational thoughts. Thank you, sir. On behalf of our institute, I extend hearty thanks to the keynote speaker, Dr. Vinayak Deshpande, sir, VC, GH Raison University, Amravati, who spared his valuable time for his, from his busy schedule to grace this occasion. Sir, today we had an opportunity to hear your thoughts 
and this will surely encourage us in all our future endeavors. Thank you, sir. On behalf of organizing committee, my sincere thanks goes to our respected principal and convener of today's seminar, Dr. Smita Deshmukh, for her exceptional guidance, motivation, and dynamic leadership. Special mention to her for being the catalyst that stimulated us to do our best. Thank you, madam. It's time to convey our gratitude to Shri S.C. Sharma, Director, NAC Bangalore, Mr. Pramod Yevle, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Santa Gadge Baba Amravati University, Amravati, and Mr. Prasad Vadegaukar, Pro Vice Chancellor of Santa Gadge Baba Amravati University, Amravati, for extending warm wishes and messages for the proceedings of today's seminar. Thank you, sir. It's my pleasure to thank to the organizing secretary of this seminar and coordinator of IQSC, Matoshri Vimlabai Deshmukh Mahadhyal Amravati, Dr. Smita Thakre. Her untiring efforts, meticulous planning of each and every aspect is clearly reflecting in the program. I know the task was not easy for her, but she completed it perfectly in her usual manner. I also thank Dr. Chaya Vidhaya, Madam, Senior Faculty of her Institute for her valuable contribution and guidance time to time. My heartfelt thanks to all the delegates attending this seminar online and offline mode. I especially thank to all those, those who have helped us for completing this seminar in uh, for today's seminar. So my sincere apologies if I have missed out somebody. Thank you again, one and all who supported directly or indirectly for this endeavor. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. After the completion of the inaugural session, now it's time to begin with the first technical session of today's national webinar. And this session we have with us Dr. Lina Dahane, ma'am, online from Bangalore. I welcome you, ma'am. So I request IQSC coordinator, organizing secretary, Dr. Thakre, ma'am, to please give a brief introduction about our today's guest. Please, ma'am. Welcome. Uh, just now, ma'am, we have uh, completed our inaugural function, and this is the technical session two. And our speaker is Dr. Lena Govind Gahane, madam, uh, who has joined us uh, online from Bangalore. I would like to introduce her in short. Uh, Dr. Lena Govind Gahane, madam, is working as deputy advisor in NAC Bangalore. She is a professor of physics with teaching and research experience for 22 years at ACET Nagpur. Earlier, she has held responsibility as Dean Academics. She is PhD supervisor of RTMNU Nagpur University and worked as member of Board of Studies. She is a member of NAC Think Tank and is instrumental in design and development of new manuals, applications, state reports, and assessment tool in light of NEB 2020. She is presently holding responsibility of convener seminar committee as well as team leader, Margadarshan mentor mentee scheme newly launched by NAC. Her area of interest is superconductivity in reference to physical world as well as human life and nano fluids. She has published many articles in national and international journals. She has also worked as national study team member of unique study done on status of women in India in 2019 and has an opportunity to discuss findings of this study with Honorable President of Bharat. She has also delivered more than 950 plus lectures on many national social technical issues on academic, social and organizational platforms and chaired the sessions in national and international conferences and webinars. A top academician, patriot, and well-known personality of national stature. She is well-known freelance writer and has written almost 1,000 articles, poems on many cult current issues in newspaper, magazines, and on social media in Hindi, Marathi, and English. 
an electronic media panelist raising female and social issues on TV channels also. She is a member of many professional bodies and social organizations like Rashtra Sevika Samiti. And she is an HR trainer for many sectors, KTC, PWD, Irrigation Department and many more. Madam, we are very fortunate to have you here on this platform of one day NAC sponsored national level seminar on role of NAC in quality enhancing in higher education institutions. I again welcome you. Please. Yeah, thank Madam, you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Welcome. If your action inspires others to dream more, learn more, and do more, and become more, you are the leader. With this note, I request Dr. Lena Ma'am to please start with her speech. Please, Ma'am. Uh, thank you, Madam. Thank you very much. Uh, let me share with my presentation. I hope my presentation is visible. Yeah. Uh, namaskars to all. Uh, my mentor, Dr. Vinayak Deshpandeji. Our member of executive committee, Dr. Smitaji Deshmukh, and principal of this institution. I am actually alumni of Shivaji Shikshan Samstha. Uh, so I am in my institution, I should say. I'm very happy that the institution has invited me uh, for one of the technical sessions, wherein I shall be discussing more on role of NAC in enhancing the quality of higher education uh, uh, education in the institutions. So let us uh, seek the blessings from Bharat Mata first, uh, Vande Bharat Mataram. Uh, in today's uh, webinar, I shall be discussing more on how exactly uh, the you know importance of education, its quality, and how NAC is playing an important role in enhancing the quality aspect. Uh, in the morning session, we has uh, we had heard extensively about the white paper. And white paper talks of how the quality of life to be improved through education and how the various aspects of, you know, uh, these quality outcomes would be measured through the assessment. So it was indeed a candid, uh, you know, presentation by Dr. Deshpande. Uh, let us begin with my, what I feel like uh, how NAC is helping out. So education is a prime mover of society and pillar of national development. And we are aware of that. We are a part of that system. So the aim of education is to focus on appropriate development of human beings. It is not mere the learning skills or the skills to earn more, to have more package. It goes much more beyond that. The process is basis of development in all other domains of human activity not just, you know, uh, mugging up the things and rote method and, uh, you know, appearing for the examination and scoring. Just just so the outcome scoring. is the... Voice. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Am I audible? Hello, am I audible? Dr. Smita, am I audible? Kindly, uh, can anybody give me an input? Am I audible? Hello? Am I audible? No, I'm not able to hear anybody.
Am I audible? Hello? Dr. Thakre, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So can I go ahead with yes, the sir. presentation? Yeah. Yeah, because there is no input from there. Okay. So the outcome... Uh, so the outcome is the quality of higher education, which makes the nation progressive and advanced in personal, professional and global spheres. So that is, uh, what is an issue? I don't know. How, why the presentation is uh, logging out? Is it visible, sir? Hello? Yes, ma'am, you are visible. Yeah, why it has been logging out? What is an issue? Okay, let me share again. Is it visible now again? No, ma'am. Okay, I will share it again. Some issue with the sir. Okay, now it is visible. Hello, is it visible, sir? Is it visible, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so the outcome is the quality of higher education, which makes the nation progressive and advance in personal and professional and global spheres. So that is the aim of the education. Now, uh, whenever we say that our institution is getting ready for NAC, that means uh, assessment and accreditation is a process which ascertains the readiness of the institution for quality. Because as you are aware of, when the institution prepares for the SSR, institution has to compile the data, or the activities, whatever are been taken for the last previous five years. So as if the institution is getting ready for the uh, quality is a purpose, I should say, of assessment and accreditation. Uh, you are aware of the NAC vision is to make quality the defining element of higher education. And this process is through the combination of self and external evaluation. That means the institution which is aspiring for the quality has to be a party uh, in this assessment and accreditation process. So also institution evaluates at their own level, all the activities, initiatives, try to, you know, uh, put it on the benchmarks that they have created, uh, to what extent they have improved uh, through various processes instilled in the institution. Then promotion and sustenance initiatives, this is a broad vision of NAG. And for uh, more than three decades, I should say now we are reaching up to the third decade, uh, the uh, NAC has been progressing in that direction. Now, so as to carry on this particular vision to make quality the defining element, and quality is not now mere an education, educated, uh, but rather it is an educatedness for global well-being. Uh, we have to do some of the uh, actions. So the mission statements of NAC is to arrange for periodic assessment and accreditation, then to stimulate the academic environment for the promotion of quality of teaching, learning and research, then to encourage self-evaluation, accountability, autonomy and innovations, and to undertake quality related research studies like consultancies and training programs then to collaborate with other stakeholders of higher education for quality evaluation, promotion, and sustenance. So these are the things through uh, assessment and accreditation NAC has been doing up. To accomplish the mission, and uh, as rightly pointed out by Dr. Deshpande, ki there are seven criteria, as I shall be uh, you know, coming through those seven criteria as well. But this entire framework, it is based on five core values. 
it is about contribution to the national development when we say that the education is the purpose wherein the overall development of the human being has to uh, take place then naturally uh, what and all are the uh, you know efforts done by the institution uh, in a way so that the attitude of the student to contribute in a uh, national development gets uh, inspired then fostering the global competencies among students pinpointedly in the white paper it, we talked about the number of engineers or the number of graduates to the number of what you can say the jobs available so our mind state to just seek a job uh, should we should overcome that and we should uh, you know make the student to uh, to be uh, like a job givers so for that there has to have the global competencies among the students so how the institution is taking efforts through various programs through various courses uh, so that the institution uh, the students are able to foster go, uh, global competencies inculcating value amongst the student is also the aim and uh, you know we live in a very diverse society wherein we have to deal with various aspects of life there are various variable parameters uh, in which we are uh, day in day to day life we are involved in so how the institution is um, looking towards this aspect of, for inculcating the value system among the student promoting use of technology is very very important today morning i was listening to the uh, you know news and it is heard that uh, a person who was traveling from uh, spain um uh, has said that uh, when that person has entered into india uh, he find that spain is uh, technically backward as compared to india because we are finding here that uh, ki the use of technology for the various aspects of life uh, has uh, has increased a lot so how in our education we are expected uh, baad mein dekhti hu i will uh, talk afterwards uh how uh, the technology is uh, uh you know uh, taught to the student how the institution is using the technology for teaching learning processes then quest for excellence what i was yesterday i have to better today uh, better uh, today isn't it uh, so how the institution is looking forward for the academic as well as overall excellence uh so that the institutionalization of quality culture happens so if you look into all these five core values as a philosophy of entire framework then you will come to know that uh pinpointedly through various policies through various processes through various decisions through various efforts if the institution is preparing for all these aspects then definitely the overall development of the student will get uh, uh, you know uh, enhanced and uh, we can say that the institution has a quality assurance system instilled in them to have that there are certain elements to be thought of institution has to have the vision mission core values and the goals of the institution like nac institution is supposed to have these values at their end and to reach up to that particular vision there are to be some action plans and depending upon all these structure what would be the core values and the goals of the institution that has to be taken care by the iqac cell of the institution the information of the quality manage uh, there has to be a formation of quality management system and internal evaluations of the programs at the level of the institution is very very necessary see friends we are all teachers faculties you know and uh, in pace with race we take up many initiatives we conduct many activities and we find that uh, we are just simply covering up uh, just like we cover syllabus sometimes no similarly we take up the activity but the purpose the objective or the aim of that particular activity and to reach that aim after completion of the activity either through the feedback or through the reviews uh, or through the discussion we are not able to gauge to what extent we have reached to the uh, objective of that particular activity so internal auditing of the various activities uh, is very very important 
along with the external evaluation. So the quality assurance system in the education will help the institutions uh, to gauge, to uh, you know, scale, uh, to know, to evaluate the progress of the institution. So quality assurance system in India, the internal quality assurance refers to the policy practices, academic institutions themselves monitor and improve the quality of the education provisions. However, the external assurance, quality assurance system like NAC will, you know, review what and all are the processes and practices. And these particular review or the observations is through a very, what you can say, uh, uh, in review, in, uh, it is through the informed process and through the framework, what we call it as the NAC 7 criteria. So it is very, very important for the institution to read the manual, to know the intent of each of the metric, to look into the documents, not mere for the purpose of NAC, but rather to have that quality culture uh, in the institution because once the institution applies the intent for assessment and accreditation, definitely the entire attitudinal change happens in the institution, isn't it? So that is our experience. So impact of quality assurance on educational institution is that the framework is required for quality eval evaluation, standards, parameters for skill development are to be there, program enhancement, institutional network is very, very important. Collaborative learning, outbound hands-on experience. This is very important. The days are gone wherein we were living uh, in an entity as a, uh, you know, standalone. Uh, we as an individual institution. But now through various collaboration, through various MOUs, we can expand the uh, learning experiences to our students, isn't it? So it is very important to have such a collaborative learning practices. So how the faculties they are taking uh, this uh, to their institution is very, very important that we conduct many workshops, co-curricular programs, conferences, seminars uh, from the checklist at the academic levels. But uh, we need to know, I should ask the question that why today's seminar? And just because to receive the grants from NAC and have one more certificate that we are being, uh, you know, we have conducted or received a grant from uh, the uh, National Assessment Accreditation Council or the purpose is to really uh, work out with how we can uh, instill the academic culture, good academic culture uh, in the institution to have good discussion among the faculties or the participants over there to look on to their experiences uh, and try to review the various processes that has to have happened. Uh, so there are six aspects of national quality assurance system, national coordination by the independent center, that is a NAC has been happening or the NBA, uh, NIRF is also one of the agencies, internal evaluation resulting in self-assessment of the reports. What NAC believes is self-assessment is very, very important. It is stated that no, Atma Parikshan yaha bohot mahatva purna hota hai aur usse hame ye pata chalta hai hamari, hamara swayam ka swat, strength, weaknesses, opportunities uh, hame pata honi chahiye so that we get ready to face the challenges. Similarly, preparation of the SSR is nothing but reviewing our own practices, reviewing our own activities so that uh, we can, uh, you know, uh, improve on those uh, scales uh, uh, in a near future. Then intermittent evaluation by the external experts partially based on establishments, self-assessment finding. So this is very important. Many a times we conduct the audits, may it be the academic audit, financial audit, it may be green audit, energy audits. So these external experts, their opinion will definitely improve the overall performance in all these areas to the institution. Then implementation of recommendations. Friends, you are aware of when you go get into the next higher cycle of assessment and accreditation, that time you will get some of the recommendation from the peer members. It is very apt and, uh, you know, very important that the institution should look into all those recommendations as a future policy document uh, to uh, improve on. Because you also get, uh, you know, the overall scores in various criteria so that do these two documents uh, will be 
deciding the forthcoming goal to the institution. Then assessment of the appropriateness and effectiveness of quality assurance methods and procedure. This is also very, very important. Now, basically, uh, if you look into the term quality, then it is very, very abstract term. And it is pursued by the different people very differently. For me, something uh, may be very a uh, quality, uh, you know, uh, initiative. But if you ask the same, uh, some other person about uh, the opinion about uh, how you look into this particular quality aspect, then the perspective may differ. So this is very as, uh, abstract term. And uh, if it has to be measured and assessed, a very appropriate intervention uh, has to be uh, required and it has to be undertaken at the right time for quality improvement and quality sustenance. And I think the next various criteria, uh, they are as if it is an intervention. And yeah, it is true that we are this particular process of revised accreditation framework. It is more of input and processes driven, but still, uh, you know, without input and processes, the expected or the desired outcome will, uh, will uh, become really difficult thing. So it is uh, very much important to have an intervention and a proper assessment tools. The quality management system in the institution should look into all these seven uh, points. The purpose of the quality what is an objective, what and all are the processes and to uh, very uh, matlab, uh, suffice for the claims in various metrics, we need to have the proper documentation, what and are the procedures, who and all are the responsibilities entitled with and how the co all components of the institution are participating uh, for enhancing the quality in the institution. So quality management system uh, has to play a crucial role for uh, achieving the desired quality. So the important point to be noted here that the quality management system's role will be to coordinate and direct the order organization's activities. Because otherwise what will happen, entire efforts will be there just to conduct the activity to review the activity, to have the proper documentation, to look into whether the desired uh, output is reached or not. So there has to be a proper coordination and direction for the organization activities. Then satisfactorily meet the stakeholders need. Sir so talk in the morning about the feedback. It is very, very important. And after the feedback is received, it has to be analyzed and action has to be taken up so that that particular action will act as a improvement in the uh, present systems. So we need to meet satisfactorily the stakeholders needs, comply with the regulatory requirements. So this is very, very important because all documentation, recent data, recent documentation, SRA compliance has to be there with the institution. Then to improve the organization's effectiveness and efficiency on a continuous basis. That is very, very important because unless and until we improve on all these aspects, then uh, we, we, we won't say that we are on the path of quality. Uh, so uh, there are certain uh, key points we need to look into. We have to create the quality awareness, quality design and plan has to be there. Quality assurance control has to be there. Quality audits and reviews has to be there and quality improvements. So all these, uh, you know, canvas of uh, actions, it comes under the quality management system. And in terms of NAC, we call it as a IQAC cell of the institution. So IQAC cell is just like a heart of the institution. If heart is strong, it is functioning good, then definitely the overall body is, you know, uh, fit and fine. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, similar will be the role of, I should say, the IQAC cell. Now we are aware of there are five elements required for the growth of any living being, isn't it? Similarly, if you look into all seven criteria of NAC, the first one is about the curricular aspect how the institution is playing an important role to make relevant changes in the curriculum, what is desired, which are contemporary and which are desired so that our students become, uh, you know, eligible 
as well as they are well versed with the current trends in uh, the academia or, or i can say the knowledge so the curricular aspect deals with the participation of the teachers at various levels with the affiliating university with the institution to uh, you know develop the curriculum uh, which is uh, suitable uh, for the current requirements second criteria talks about the teaching learning and evaluation process teacher is a heart of the institution so how the teaching levels are improved by the quality uh, quality teachers how they are being you know encouraged to pursue the higher degrees whether they are uh, are uh, you know uh, given a liberty uh, to frame uh, uh, you know uh, what you can say uh, or given a liberty to deliver the content uh, how they actively they are part participating in this teaching and learning evaluation processes uh, in the morning we had heard about the research and publications and cert cert talked about hundreds of papers are been published but uh, really we need not ask a question to what extent my research or my studies are important for transformation in the society so in i should say in the teaching learning process how the quality uh, teachers are involved and how the teaching learning processes are been continuously improved with the new technology or new gadgets then second comes is a research and innovation research is quest to all what you can say development isn't it uh a good publication a good research and uh, you know uh, the inspiration of the student uh, to innovate new new things guiding them uh, and having good publication in a peer reviewed journals or having a good pu books uh, publication of good books uh, then uh, you know uh, inspiring the teachers to attend various conferences all these canvas would be covered under the third criteria that is research and innovation fourth criteria talks about student progression and its support to what extent through the various strata of the society the students are enrolled and how the motivation through the scholarship may it be the government scholarship or may it be the non government scholarship how the institution is facilitating the student to progress high either through uh, to the jobs or to the uh, what you can say higher studies next comes the infrastructure and learning resources friends this is very very important because unless and until you have a good infrastructure you don't uh, if, uh, you have a good ambience learning ambience uh, it is really difficult so how the inst uh, institution is spending on all these infrastructure and uh, learning resources and updating their campuses as per the requirement the leadership plays an important role so how is the governance and how is the management how is the cooperation so that whatever is the aim objective of the institution and how through the various policies through the various initiatives institution is trying to reach to that particular goal so in governance leadership and management these things are uh, covered nag believes that each of the institution is a distinct and uh, that distinctiveness has to be you know expressed uh, through the various uh, institutional uh, 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 uh practices or i can say that it has a best practices so uh, in the seventh criteria uh, the questions or the metrics they are related to the institutional values and best practices wherein the institution can showcase how they are uh, you know to the requirement of uh, the made we are to the society to may it be to the institution may it be to the student may it be to the in uh, industry how they are uh you know uh, initiated such practices so uh, this is how the seven criteria uh, are similar to the five elements what i stated as uh, soil earth water uh, sun and uh, you know air uh, similar are the seven criteria for the living entity like the educational institution so if the institution stakeholders may it be the student may it be the teachers management aluminies or the uh, you know the uh, other people who are associated are serious about the total development or the overall holistic development of the institution they will be definitely 
understand the importance of uh, you know uh, quality academics and to have that uh, they will definitely uh, agree with me that if they the institution is getting re ready for assessment accreditation and thus uh, you know there is a uh, proper direction for the development of the institution i will just quickly rush through the various key indicators which are there in various criteria like curriculum planning implementation i have talked much on then the academic flexibility has to be there if you look into the national education policy even it is talking of the multidisciplinary education wherein there will be the canvas open wherein the institution uh, the student will be getting a fair chance to opt for the subjects of their liking uh, similarly we talks about the uh, academic flexibility then the curriculum enrichment and the feedback from the stakeholders at various levels then in the second criteria we look into the profile of the student that is a student enrollment and its profile teaching learning processes the teacher quality then student performance and learning outcomes how they are been measured whether there are cos there are pos and whether the learning outcomes at various stages uh, of the academics is been evaluated or not they, whether there are the reforms in the evaluation processes and the student is also party to give their feedbacks uh, in uh, the second criteria matrix that is a student satisfaction survey about uh, the total academic environment of the institution especially focused to teaching learning and evaluation processes so you can look into how the nax an process uh, involves uh, the all stakeholders their overall development uh, through the various key indicators then research i have talked about how the institution is getting ready uh, through the accreditation to uh, you know uh, get the funds from various funding agencies maybe ugc maybe dst dbt or other funding agencies like that how the institution is promoting the research culture and how the you know awards are been grabbed uh, by the or i should i should say backed uh, by the uh, faculty or the student to the institution if you are expertise in some of the areas uh, whether the institution is taking up the consultancies uh, because they are knowledgeable in the area so through which the funding would be uh, generated and the expand or uh, expansion of the knowledge will be a possibility then collaboration with various institution and the extension activities so it covers under the criteria number 3 then fourth is about i talked about the uh, physical infrastructure how the facilities are there whether the library is well in place whether there is a e library e contents e journals are available in the institution how is the it infrastructure and how the uh, campus is been maintained Uh, so it will be covered under the fourth criteria then the fifth criteria talks about student supports student support uh, progression to the higher education student participation in various activities and how our brand ambassadors like uh, alumni uh, how they are supporting the uh, you know development of the institution sixth criteria talks about the leadership and management so how visionary is the leader uh, how the institution is going ahead or taken a forward under the effective leadership of the uh, you know uh, 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 under the effective leadership then strategy development and deployment is very very important you know uh, the uh, educational institution uh as i said has the various stakeholders uh with the you know various potentials and various ideas the proper person in the proper place uh has to be deployed so that uh, a person gets a, a chance a fair chance uh, to explore and uh, you know ex uh, experiment with the ideas and also gets a good job satisfaction so there has to be a strategic planning the institutional leader or the iqsc cell uh, should be just like that camera we have no uh, which captures everything 
uh, it should be just like that camera looking for the qualities in various individuals associated with the institution so that for a typical type of work, a specific type of work, a person would be deployed so that those skills will, uh, you know, uh, definitely improve the quality in uh, of the institution. Faculty empowerment strategies has to be there then how the financial management and resource mobilization is taking place and how powerful is the IQAC cell of the institution. Seven criteria talks about institutional values, social responsibilities, best practices, and institutional distinctiveness because we believe that the institution should also look forward of beyond the campus for the transformation through the various activities. When the entire the next criteria, uh, the key indicators, the metrics, the documentation happens, then definitely the transformation what we are expecting in the institution uh, is experience. Friend, if you look into your own institution, who has not gone earlier for NAC? And after the first cycle, the overall, uh, you know, uh, what you can say, uh, uh, overall encouragement, uh, overall a sense of responsibility with all the stakeholders about all activities in the institution, there will be a paradigm shift you will be experiencing. So we are finding that through uh, NAC or through getting into the NAC, uh, definitely there is a shift uh, in the uh, processes, in the documentation, in, you know, uh, what you can say, formulating the things in a better way to get a good result is a possible. So uh, we need to look into that our journey of the institution because it is a teaching and learning process. The entire journey is about the education. Uh, we have to uh, improve on not only for the student, I should say for all stakeholders, we should reach a, a ladder from just remembers to creation of the knowledge uh, so that uh, it is really becomes a vibrant uh, education imparting uh, institution. What you hear, you remember temporarily. What you see, you remember better. But what you will do will be remembered forever. And this is uh, the, uh, what you can say, principle behind experiential methodology. So uh, quality is uh, an uh, uh, is a step and when you reach to a particular uh, stage uh, it is experienced and definitely I should say that this experiencing uh, good experiences will definitely motivate the uh, institution uh, 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 so that they can take up uh, various initiatives they can collaborate with other institutions uh, they can learn together to grow and in that case, the quality assurance sale definitely will play an important role. Uh, this is not exactly uh, the, uh, I should say, the uh, presentation on uh, mere the criteria or mere a and a process. Rather, it is uh, a, a, what you can say a, a blend of uh, the uh, revised accreditation framework and what we can do uh, if we are into the next A and A process. So the IQC cell, we believe that uh, it has a responsibility uh, to catalyze the improvement uh, in the institution through various academic culture, through various activities, through various initiatives, uh, through various policies, taking together the entire institution in the campus and beyond the campus. See, we are very, uh, you know, privileged. I should, I should say we are very... Uh, uh, Bhagyavan, that we are in the time when the national education policy is been implemented. So our hard work and sincere efforts of quality education is an opportunity in the light of NEP to grow. See if you could grab it at the right time, otherwise uh, the door will get open, choice is yours. I should say that don't run with ignorance. People talk of many things about don't run with ignorance. Entire information related to assessment and accreditation, it is hosted on NAC website. All the manuals, all the SOPs, all the uh, you know data templates, glossary, everything is there. 
So also, if you wanted to put your opinion on white paper, it is also displayed on the NAC website. Uh, you should read, understand, and you should be knowledgeable. The new hashtag of life is be a change, see a change. Uh, so if we really wanted to contribute for Atmanirbhar Bharat, I should say that uh, we should be uh, practicing the Atmanirbhar Bharat uh, at our end in the institution uh, so that uh, our in uh, students are inspired and uh, they become an innovative uh, job givers rather than job seekers. They will have a very good life, not mere in terms of a success, uh, but they will have a meaningful life. Uh, so this is how uh, the role of NAC uh, is very important uh, to instill quality in the institution. Um, I remember when I was very young, uh, that time my mother used to scold me a lot. I remember when whatever she tells me, uh, it is for benefit uh, of my life. It is benefit for me to grow as a good human being. Uh, similarly, I think that NAC also within that framework of revised accreditation, uh, all those criteria is what to be done. And if you see the SOP, you know, it's very beautiful. What not to be done is also uh, been explained there. So definitely it will, yeah, the account, uh, the liberty is there, autonomy is there with the institution that they can present uh, their, uh, uh, you know, uh, responses in a way they wanted to but still if there is a proper guideline definitely uh, the quality culture get enhanced uh, and this is how the NAC is working. Uh, thank you Smita Thakreji, IQSC Director of Matoshri uh, Vimblatai Deshmukh Mahavidyalai Amravati and Dr. Smita Deshmukhji. Uh, thank you very much Principal Madam uh, for giving me an opportunity to share my views on role of NAC in enhancing uh, quality in higher education institution. And I just wanted to uh, make a point that Dr. Vinayak Deshpande's presentation was candid. I request Dr. Deshpande, sir, kindly mail me your presentation uh, because it is it was very, you know, kadi kadi manto na apan ki sonara ni kanta to save. Sir, I'm se guru ahit, tacha moe tani je sangit lami ata paranta white paper vatsili like dunda. Tacha or me discussion pan kela. पण ज्या पर्सपेक्टिव्ह नी सरांनी हा विषय आज पुन्हा एकदा सांगितला आमच्या सगळ्यांसाठी द वे ही हॅज एक्सप्लेन द थिंग्स इट वॉज रिअली अपिलिंग टू मी अँड आय हॅव गिव्ह आय गॉट अ न्यू इन्साईट टू दिस व्हाईट पेपर सो आय रिक्वेस्ट सर टू मेल मी दॅट प्रेझेंटेशन थँक्यू व्हेरी मच नमस्ते इफ देर आर एनी क्वेश्चन वी कॅन टेक अप दॅट क्वेश्चन now I request Dr. Smita Deshmukh, ma'am, to please express her views. Please, ma'am. Thank you so much, Reena Ji. Thank you so much. Being an alumni of Sri Shivaji Education Society, Arts and Commerce College, and uh, a very vibrant personality you are in a NAC office, I used to listen to you so many times. The last time I was in Sri Shivaji Arts and Commerce College, and you delivered a so nice lecture. I just remember everything. And uh, you covered so many things. And definitely our respected Vice Chancellor, Dr. Vinayak Deshpande sir has given a lot. And you are given a, such a nice initiatives to look at the NAC once again. And uh, my all participants sitting over here, they have written such a tremendous, can I, uh, shall we, uh, is it possible for you to see this one? Uh, this is uh, just a proceeding just we have inaugurated by our secretary, Vijay Thakre, sir, in presence of uh, Dr. Vinayak Deshpande, sir, and all my staff members. And in that, all my uh, participants and uh, you can say all the stakeholders written so many very nice papers. Just to re uh, read the index over here, the initiatives in educational management by NAC for quality enhancement of higher education in tune with NAP 2020. Then I can cover all those topics, whatever you are explaining in that academic audit for quality management in higher education, the role of IQSC, then crucial role of IQSC in quality enhancement in rural colleges, analysis of research role 
NAX role in ensuring quality and prospects in higher education institute, role of alumni, role of outcome-based higher education in national accreditation system in India, then student support progression, then innovation, creativity, role of environment studies in higher education, role of quality assurance in higher education assessment, the role of governance and leadership, role of NAC and creativity, innovations, and along with that, role of ethics, what Deshpati sir and Bhushanji Patwardhan has ex expressed in the white paper, then values in higher education, the case study of Mato Sharifimla by learning process, student satisfaction survey, quality enhancement, review, need, games and sports, impact of skill uh, development, all these things, why I'm saying, because these are the efforts taken by all my staff members and so it's very essential being the principal of this college it's very essential to uh, that means having this record to the NAC also because we are work a lot and our management supported us and uh, you are uh, really your lecture is so uh, informative and it is uh, live streaming on youtube so it's possible for all us to listen and to watch every time. Definitely we'll send the feedback uh, for all your valuable guidance and suggestions given by NAC authority. And so thanks for being here and definitely in future we'll meet again. Thanks, thank you, Liraji. thank you. Thank you, thank you so much ma'am for your kind words. Now the technical session has come to an end. So I request to Pali Gaukar madam to please deliver the vote of thanks. Good afternoon all. Thank you is such a prayer that cannot be seen or touched. It must be felt by heart. I feel honored and privileged to get the opportunity to propose a vote of thanks on this special occasion. On behalf of organizing committee of this event and Matoshri Vimla by Deshmukh College, I convey deep regards and hearty thanks to the chairperson of this technical session, Dr. Smita Deshmukh ma'am, principal of our college. Without her support, it in all uh, possible manner, this uh, can't be uh, come to this. And I owe my sincere thanks to Dr. Lina Gahane ma'am, advisor NAC, Bangalore, who was the speaker of this technical session. And ma'am, we are really enlightened with your knowledge about all the seven criteria regarding NAC. And also I thanks for your online presence here. Thank you, ma'am. Also, I want to express heartfelt gratitude to all the guest faculty members and those who are present here. Thank you. Thank you once again. Thank you, ma'am. Now, there is an instruction for all of you. There is, a, uh, there is a short lunch break now. And after the lunch break, everyone have to gather in the same hall for the next session at sharp 2.30. I request everyone to please follow the instructions. <laughs>